Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to finally put together our macroeconomic model, our wage setting, price setting model, uh, and see uh, what it says about the unemployment rate and the real wage and profits and how those are all related to each other. Uh, and we'll see it's uh, not as obvious as we might expect. All right, so we've sort of put our template together in the last video, right? And we have uh, our employment on the horizontal axis. Remember, our dotted blue line here is the labor force. So that's everybody who wants to work. And we're kind of assuming that that's fixed, right? Now, as we'll see in the short run, that is not fixed. That will move up and down. Uh, but for the moment, we're just going to say, okay, the labor force is fixed. And then we have our output per worker and our real wage on the vertical axis. Now, we talked a little bit more about uh, sort of productivity and profit and the real wage in the last video. We're going to look at that again in just a second. Um, but what we want to think now is about the that sort of HR department, right? That part of the firm that is worried about getting workers to, you know, agree to work for the firm, show up and work hard um, so that they can produce what they want. And so we're making a couple assumptions here. One is that uh, in order to get workers to work, they're going to have to pay them a wage. And in order to find those workers and get them motivated, they are going to have to pay a higher wage as the unemployment rate gets lower. And we can think about that sort of two different ways, right? One is we can say, well, when there's fewer and fewer workers that are unemployed, then it's going to be harder and harder for firms to find workers. And so they will have to pay a higher wage in order to get them to come. Um, or we can think of it in terms of the workers themselves, right? And so if we think about the cost of losing your job, when the unemployment rate is really low, then it's going to be a lot easier to find a new job. And so you won't be as motivated to work hard. You might not care as much about this particular job. And so firms will have to pay you more. Um, whereas when the unemployment rate is high, then you really don't want to lose your job because it's going to be a lot harder to find one. And so the value of that job is high. And so firms don't have to pay as much. And so that's basically what this wage setting curve is showing, right? Is that there's some you know, there's some minimum that, that you have to pay to get any workers. And then it increases slowly uh, as employment in the economy increases. But then as the unemployment rate gets really low, it starts increasing more quickly. And so at a point like A, our employment level is NA, right? That's measured from left here at zero to NA. And the unemployed is the distance from the labor force to... Uh, the employment level. And so at the end of this chapter, we'll, we'll just do a couple examples, make sure everybody's on the same page, sort of using this model uh, when we're thinking about, you know, our labor force statistics um, that we talked about in an earlier video. All right, so here's our wage setting, but we said this model is called the wage setting price setting model. Um, and so here is our price setting curve. This is just what we had before. Right. And so our price setting curve is just starts with output per worker. Right. That's how much workers are producing on average in our economy. Then it subtracts out the average profit margin. Right. Which is the distance between lambda, our output per worker and the real wage. And then that gives us our real wage. And as we said before, that does not depend on employment. And so those are just both horizontal lines. And so the real wage then is determined entirely by uh, labor productivity, which is going to depend on how much physical capital they have, how much technology they have, how much human capital they have. And so that's like, you know, physical capital is like the machines, the factories, the tools they have. Technology is how they put all those things together in order to produce all the stuff that we're going to sell. And then human capital is all the skills, the education, the experience that workers have that make them more productive. And so that's going to determine our output per worker. The profit per worker gets determined on the microeconomic side, right? That's that marketing department trying to figure out, okay, well, you know, if we increase the price a little bit, our, our profit's going up or down. 
we talked in you know principles of microeconomics a couple ways to determine that but really it comes down to sort of how much market power uh, firms have in the economy the more market power they have the higher the profit margin so that real wage gets pushed down and the lower the market power they have the lower the profit margin and so that real wage gets pushed up and so we can put these two curves together right and now we have our upward sloping wage setting curve that's in purple here and our horizontal price setting curve that's in gray now the output per worker is here right that output per worker is hugely important because if we can increase output per worker you know for any given profit level that's going to increase our wage but it doesn't right it's we're not interested in the intersection here we're interested in the intersection between the wage setting and price setting curve and so if we think about what's going on, right, each individual firm is deciding on their wages and their prices. Uh, then they are um, hiring workers and producing products and selling them. Uh, and that gives us then our equilibrium, right? So all of those firms have decided to hire NA workers. They their workers produce an average of lambda units per hour. Their profits are lambda minus WA. And so workers on average are earning WA. And so our equilibrium here is at point A. And so this is an equilibrium. This means, what does an equilibrium mean? Well, just remember from microeconomics, it means there's no pressure in the system pushing us away from that, right? And so as we will see, we, we are not always at equilibrium in macroeconomics. And sometimes we don't even know when we are at equilibrium. We often use sort of five to 10 year averages to try to sort of figure out what that equilibrium even is. Um, but it means that there's no pressures, right? There's nothing pushing the wage up. There's nothing pushing the wage down. There's nothing changing profit levels or output per worker. Um, and so that gives us our equilibrium. Now, notice a couple things. One is that the real wage is entirely determined by labor productivity and profit levels, right? We just take output per worker, that's labor productivity, subtract the average profit level, that gives us our average real wage. The unemployment rate is entirely determined by the wage setting curve and where it intersects with that price setting curve. And so what we'll talk about is things that will shift these curves around, right? Like we did in microeconomics, but anything that shifts the wage setting curve is not going to affect the real wage, right? It's only going to affect the level of employment. And so this is why a lot of times economists, you know, focus on, you know, policies that will reduce unemployment because it's better if the wage is set, then we want more people who want to work, to be working. All right. So here we can sort of think about recruitment, right? So the, the sort of wage setting part of this model. Um, and there's obviously the labor market, as we'll talk about a little bit more, is, is a very volatile market. There's always people, you know, entering the labor market, leaving the labor market, switching jobs, getting fired, quitting. Um, and so we're going to sort of ignore that to some extent uh, and just think about, all right, well, what in determines the real wage and how is that related to the amount of workers in the firm? And basically what this is saying, right, this is just an upward sloping line. All it's saying is that the more workers that the firm wants to hire, the higher their wage is going, the higher the wages that they'll have to pay. Um, and... This is going to be true on a sort of macroeconomic level as well because of what we talked about before, right? When the unemployment rate is really low, it's a lot easier to find a job. Your employment rent is lower, uh, and so you um, will have to be paid more in order to, you know, take that job. Now, if we think about, you know, the reservation wage versus you know, the wage that firms actually pay. Uh, so the reservation wage is like the minimum amount that firms have to pay workers just to get them to show up. 
But if you're paying workers the minimum amount, then they're not going to put forth a lot of effort, right? They don't really care if they get fired because you're just paying them the minimum. That's like, this is the bare minimum I was willing to accept just to show up to work today. And I don't care if you fire me. So if I don't care if you fire me, then I'm really not going to put forth a lot of effort. And so the firm has to say, all right, well, then I'm going to have to pay you some more uh, in order to get you to put forth effort, right? The cost of effort. Um, and so we call that the sort of no shirking wage. It's also called like efficiency wages, um, but it's going to be something higher than the reservation wage, right? And so it's still going to be an upward sloping line in terms of employment, um, but it's going to be something higher than the reservation wage. The reservation wage is just like the minimum you are willing to accept. It's like, you know, you pay me, you know, seven dollars an hour may i'll show up but if you fire me i don't really care if you pay me ten dollars an hour okay well then maybe i want to stay i want to work i don't want to get fired all right so then if we think about this you know at each firm right where they have to you know pay workers uh some you know amount and that amount is going to increase when the unemployment rate is lower versus when it's higher then that gives us our upward sloping wage setting curve. Um, basically, firms are saying, all right, well, we have to pay workers, you know, a little bit more just to get them. And then as the unemployment rate falls, we have to pay even more in order to get more workers. And so eventually they're not going to want to hire more workers because they're going to be so expensive. Um, but that will give us our upward uh, sloping uh, wage setting curve. All right. So what about the price setting decision? Well, the price setting decision really comes from microeconomics, right? We have some level of technology. We are going to need some workers. Um, we're paying them a wage W, so that's the cost of labor. Um, and then we're going to figure out our price, right, based on um, the uh, you know demand curve and marginal revenue and marginal cost curves. And so that will give us our uh, prices and our wages. And of course, what workers really care about is the real wage. And so if we aggregate that across the economy, um, then we'll get W divided by P, which will give us our real wage. And so we can sort of put all this together, right? It doesn't, this looks very complicated. It's not really that complicated, right? So if we just think about uh, what it is. The marginal cost here is just the wage, and then this is the markup, right? So mu, um, which looks like that lowercase u with a little tail on it, is the Greek letter mu. Uh, that's going to give us uh, our, our price level. Um, and our average cost here, the total cost of labor divided by how much we produce, so that's just the wage times the number of workers, so that's w times n, divided by y. Um, and of course, we know y divided by n is labor productivity. So since those are backwards, we put lambda, our labor productivity, in the denominator. Um, and then we can uh, figure out sort of the uh, marginal cost in terms of our labor productivity, uh, which depends on the employment elasticity of the wage. That just means how much more workers can we get if we increase the wage, right? Remember, elasticities are always just a percent change, a percent divided by a percent. So it's a percent change divided by a percent change. Um, and then putting that all together, right? This is the one, the bottom one that we're going to actually use is the nominal wage divided by the price level, which is the real wage, is just labor productivity, lambda, times one minus... Uh, sigma or the profit share and so graphically all that's saying is that okay well we take lambda that's how much each worker produces we subtract out sigma times lambda that's how much profit goes to the firm and then we're left with the wage which is one minus sigma times lambda so let's do an example right so let's imagine that workers are producing $100 of value every hour and uh, firms are getting 20% of that. So sigma is 0.2. So lambda equals 100, 
sigma times lambda, uh, 0.2 times 100, that's 20. And so firms are getting $20 of profit per hour. And then workers, in this case, are getting 1 minus sigma, which is 1 minus 0.2 or 0.8 times lambda, which is 100. So they're getting $80 in terms of the wage. So in this case, it would be $100 for lambda and $80 for the real wage. Don't worry if you didn't get all that right away. We're going to come back to it. We'll talk about it. Uh, we'll have some examples at the end of this chapter. Um, I do think this model is very useful, but it can be very confusing the first time you see it. Uh, you can go watch the video again. Don't worry too much about all of that math, right? The only thing that we want to remember is labor productivity is on top. We subtract out the profit. That gives us our real wage. And then we have the upward sloping wage setting curve that determines the amount of employment and unemployment in the economy.